going on, everybody? It's me, the PR. I am me coming back with another episode of the Prime Nostalgia Podcast here with my co host, Lee Boy TV. Tell the people what's up. What's up? What's up, y'all? Lee Boy TV in the building as usual. This is, uh, you know, at least half my podcast. I'm the co host here. So, yes, get used to seeing this mug. I mean, they've seen it for over 50 episodes. Man, we're so, coming up yeah. on a, a big milestone. Um, so yeah, you guys make sure you're staying in tune for the next uh, eight, nine episodes, and then you're going to hear a big, uh, it'll be a celebration that you'll be in tune with. Yeah. Celebration. Celebration. Mm, yes. Suspense. <sighs> if you can't. Count. Yeah. Yeah. In case you can't. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, I couldn't count. So if be honest, let's <laughs> yeah, be honest, I, I could not count. You. I was like, ass out with that. Uh, I think because I was so, uh, we'll talk about it later. You know. I was so geared to like the one week where I was like, wait, dang, it does fall on that week, doesn't it? 100th episode, y'all. 100th episode yeah, is coming yeah, up yeah. just in case. Yeah, we're being too cryptic here. This uh, is, I mean, th- this is episode 90, just to let y'all know. This is episode 90. So. episode 90. So that's a milestone in itself. But yeah, we got yeah. the 100th coming up. So looking out for something special, y'all just stay in tune to what we got. You never know. Might pop up. Yes. Mm. Yeah. So this is episode ninety. I mean, we can we can spill a little bit, not to spill everything, but uh, I am planning on on episode one hundred to maybe you know like somewhat do what Ready to Retro did, have people send in like you know thank yous or whatnot. We could probably like watch them or whatever or whatever. Uh, that's what I'm thinking. You know. Things don't yeah, always we'll work see, out. We'll but find out. We'll, 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 we'll see. Ain't we'll nothing see. for that, bro. What you mean it won't work out? People better send in their videos. That's hey. nothing. All they got to do is send it in. We know at least 10 people. We could get some videos. I mean, <laughs> people can send it in, but I'm saying, you know. Uh, we have people, a lot bigger plans than that. I'll say we'll see, well, well, we'll well, yeah. see what we're able to pull well, yeah. off. But the least that people could do is send in a video for the hundreds. Yeah. Like, come send, on now. Send, that's, yeah. that's a low bar. What you talking about? It might work. Hey, that, that hey, well, work. I'm just saying, you know, we, we got a lot of people over 40 that we know that may or may not know how to send messages. You know? Hey, if we can't get no videos for our hundreds, I'm quitting. I swear. I ain't doing this no more. We can't get garner no attention. That's at least to get a video. What are we doing it for? What do yeah, you mean? That's yeah. a low bar, man. We going to step. Well, we doing something we'll see. We out here for the hundred. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, y'all got to, you know, so, uh, so yeah, we got a topic today. Mm. Uh, you do you want to tell the people what kind of topic we we got? Well, look, I can intro it a little bit because you know the All Star. Well, look, the playoffs is coming out soon for NBA, and uh, you know I wanted to talk about the playoffs, but Mister Prime got his other show that he gonna do with his uh, little man crush, his uh, bromance partner. Um, they're gonna be talking about the playoffs, so we couldn't talk about that today. But in the theme look, of the NBA playoffs, we. Talking right. about Mr. Basketball himself, the guy, Kobe Bryant. He's had so many nostalgic moments, even off the, um, off the court. So we want to talk about everything that he's done. One, I want to talk about him on the court and some of his best uh, playoff appearances. But um, obviously, he's had some great moments in TV and also movies. Uh, and so we want to make sure that we highlight uh, Kobe in all his many facets, and and you know, come with a little Kobe appreciation episode. I just I just thought of this. Have you heard anything about Kwame Brown recently? Yeah, that he went at uh, Matt Barnes. Yeah, he was going over Matt Barnes, <laughs> Gilbert Arenas, and Stephen Jackson. I you just had to bring no that re- up. You got it. You can't be talking Kwame. We don't want to hear. Don't he get? Don't he got two? What? Rings? Was he not on the Lakers? Uh, repeat teams on the season? bench. No, on the bench, he wasn't on the know. bench. No, 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 no. All right, well, he was whatever the those, case. He was in them off years. Yeah, he was never part of the championship <laughs> years. Nah. Whatever the case was, he had the line of the century almost. He said, "Look, yeah, me and Kobe dropped eighty-two combined, and we won." <laughs> <laughs> he had one. Yeah. He had one foot. Yeah. He was like, he was like, look. Are y'all not entertained? Y'all told the man to shoot, and then y'all get mad because he's shooting. I set them screens, though. That's what I did. I'm like, bruh. All right, bro. You can't. Right. Don't talk to Matt Barnes. Um, <laughs> you know, and I'm not, you know, I ain't no Matt Barnes fan or nothing, but that guy is a lot more accolades than you, Kwame. Like, use the one 
you had your chance, bro. You you played for Jordan and with Kobe, and you didn't do nothing with that. So I mean, uh, I, let's stop it now. Let's just stop it. Uh, as a Ricky, when you got Michael Jordan telling tell you you trash, I mean, I mean that probably was a rough start for him. For sure. Yeah, and then you got Kobe telling you trash. <laughs> The next teammate, it's like I'm, I'm maybe quit. you should just believe it. Yeah, you just yeah, kind of he was like, I'm gonna quit. And then you got Stephen A. Smith. Body, yeah, Stephen A. Smith talking trash every every episode of his show. So yeah, okay. My bad. I just had to bring that up. No, it's cool. It's cool. We, uh look, oh, because we oh, because we don't have no sports fans that listen to the podcast. We don't look, <laughs> people. We don't have sports. Sports, sports. Uh, fans, stand up. Look, get in the comments. I, we, yeah, yeah. Y'all here. Y'all here. Yeah, y'all, y'all gotta let us know. Y'all gotta be like there because, like, bro, we have no sports fans whatsoever. I'm, I, we got Brian. That's it. Brian and Max from Ready to Retro. That's all the known sports fans. Well, we, I, I guess, unless you know, you know, all of our listeners or what? I guess. <laughs> Hopefully not. Look, hopefully we got. I some don't. Random people I, that I don't know all the listeners, but I'm just saying, like, I don't. I don't want to be out there doing the sports episode. We like we 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 end up in detail talking about something good, and then some people be like, I don't know about sports. I'm not gonna. Well, hopefully Bye. this episode could bridge so, yes. the gap. We can find out because yeah. everybody loves Kobe. Uh, not everybody loves sports. I think everybody should love nostalgia sports, just because. You know, the old NBA from the 90s, 2000s was a spectacle. You know, that's when it really, you know, caught its legs. And, um, you know, obviously with Jordan being the spark off the off the backs of Magic and Bird. Uh, but, you know, the heyday of the NBA and the playoffs is just, you know, the 90s, 2000s. And that's what this podcast is really centered around. So hopefully we can garner some uh, some sports fans through this episode that way we can sprinkle in a little bit of sports nostalgia every once in a while. Hey, and even maybe get an athlete on here. You never know. Yeah. Hopefully. Nice. I mean, because, you know, like for, for me, for example, it's like if I seen a podcast talking about the Mighty Ducks, I wasn't going to listen to that episode because I don't know nothing about the oh, Mighty you Ducks. You tripping, you tripping, you tripping. And, but uh, I guess now since I've like watched the movie, now I probably am more prone to listen to a Mighty Ducks review. But before then, I was like, I'm not – but wait, that's not, to even, that episode. that's not even sports. Are oh, you just saying if it's something that you're not really interested in, you won't really? Yes, yeah, like if it's a topic that I don't know about, mm-hmm. I'm probably not gonna be. That's why. That's why I was. That's that was my concern. That was. I feel but, you. I yeah. feel you. I feel you. But yeah, I definitely wanted to talk some playoffs in general, like some of our bet favorite NBA playoff moments. Uh, just because you know the, the NBA playoffs are coming up, so um, you know. But I am excited. I think we came up with a hell of a topic today. Uh, in this Kobe celebration, Kobe appreciation uh, that I'm ready to get into. Like, so, so where do we start? Cause there's so many things to love about Kobe, um, Mr. Bean Bryant. I'll say, first off, one of my favorite things about Kobe, and this is little, uh, not, not talked about too much is uh, the fro, the Kobe fro. Did he start the messy fro? Did he start the, the scene of people just don't give a damn and pick they pick their hair out and just let it go and just he didn't really get the fade, but he's the first person I saw that just came out the house like. But if oh. he's not the first, I know Ben Wallace is a close second. So hey. oh you, yeah, it wasn't, uh, he wasn't the first though. But Ben Wallace looked crazy like his that was different. Ben Wallace. Ain't that care. Was different. Yeah, he just threw the headband on like a a ten. That was like a, a 24 inch fro he had going. But Kobe he had the nice compact, you know, he could you could tell he got a cut, a little taper on the side, you know. Uh he just didn't pick it out. And I always was like, bro, why is he like coming out nappy headed? Like, <laughs> you know, when I first when I first saw him, but it's a trend now. That's where everybody, everybody's got the uh, the nappy look going. And I just want to, you know, shout out to Kobe for embracing the the free form curls, you know. It's not uh, something that you seen from back in the, in the 90s. And uh, I think it's a trend that he may have started. I think um, when Kobe started, he was still in the fade era. So everybody else had either fades or ball heads. Right. So I think uh, Kobe, may, he may have. Because uh, at the top of my head, I'm thinking of fade. You got Pippen, Larry Johnson, and all these other uh, stars. Then you got Baldies like Shaq and uh, Michael Jordan, so yeah. 
Yeah, so give get you know give Kobe his credit, man, for for uh, making it cool to rock. Like I said, the natural free form, and uh, you know we're still paying ode to Kobe today when it comes to that hairstyle. I think you know I think it comes all all comes from the Godfather Kobe. Uh, another thing that you know that actually this was on court, but it was just something that w- became a staple uh, from Kobe was the Mamba face, right? When he hit that shot and he just. The bottom teeth came out, that grill. Bruh, there's just something about that next level Kobe. It's like Super Saiyan Kobe. When he hits that, you already know, just get out the way, clear it out. Um, or you probably just you probably just got dunked on or something. Like it's probably already over once that come out. But yeah, the yeah, that them damn mamba teeth, bruh. That uh Kobe was definitely crazy for that. What are some of your your favorite Kobe moments, whether on or off the court. Uh, speaking of Mamba, randomly, I got two, two, two. Well, two ones that I'm gonna say now. Then I'm gonna say something later. The mm-hmm. commercial with him and the snakes was always weird to me. And then um, I don't know if you. It was like a inside the NBA segment <laughs> where Kobe jumped over the car. I don't remember. All timer. You don't remember that. No, nah, not right now. That's an all-time segment. If Kobe is like, all right, look, look at these. I got the mama zone. This is what happens when you got the mama zone. It's like amateur footage. And he uh he goes Wait, and it's a car he, coming by. He's in a parking he, lot. Yes, he jumps over the oh, car. Yeah, he jumps standing, and the car yeah, drives he's by. Still, yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. I remember. Yeah, yeah. He's standing like, still. Yeah, and everybody was like, "Well, I remember just thinking about how stupid that was in case he got injured." I'm like, "Bro, you can't be putting." Because yeah, well, as Laker yeah. fans, we just worried about no, no, we don't like to see our players doing nothing crazy. Yeah, and I remember that was just looked dumb as hell to me. But no, I definitely remember. Yeah. <laughs> No, I mean, uh, it was it was good marketing because people was like, "How did he do that? Can I do that?" And of course, people tried that, and you know, you know how that went. But yeah, those those are just uh, real quick. My two, I don't know why. When you said "mama," I thought of the snakes and all that. But uh, on the court moments, there is a lot, obviously. But uh, one of my favorite uh, Kobe isms, if we gonna call him that, is just. He's not, he's not, it's not his selfishness, but it is his selfishness. Oh, it's that like he never did. <laughs> the, <laughs> that he never passed in the first the memes of him not there. passing. Yes, it's the memes of him not passing is, is hilarious. Oh man, so just um, and the, you know, I'll yeah. just say, I think I could go ahead and just say that, um, I wasn't a huge fan of Kobe forever. I was definitely more of a Shaq fan, and one of my favorite player of all time is Magic. Um, and right now it's LeBron. Uh, so I'm, I'm real big on team players. Um, obviously magic and LeBron embody that. Um, so I wasn't, you know, just shooting when you got two, three people on you just makes you want to rip to me. Five I just rip people. my hair out. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah. Five and the man was try. always fine. <laughs> Cause yeah, yeah he, would, he would go into the paint and, you know, he would beat his man, but the man is still right on him. He, he would face the double team, and then he got all the centers coming up, the whole front court. You got three, four people out on the wing, yeah. bro. <laughs> then he did, did a fadeaway. Like, come on. <laughs> come on, man. Like, you got Rick Fox over here is killing from three. Passing the ball. You got Fisher killing. Robert Ory. Come on, bro. You know, he got Eddie Jones right out of town. He never passed him the ball. They <laughs> – him and Van Exel, look, they was gone as soon as Kobe started getting play time. But, um, yeah, I'll, I'll just say that he wasn't always my favorite. But once – I think once Shaq left, he was really able to show, you know, what he had. Uh, he just put the entire city of L.A. on his back. So that's when I really fell in love with Kobe's play style and also his heart, obviously. His skill was always there. But, um, you know, he was really able to, you know, put it out there once Shaq left. I would say um, he was. I thought he was always able to put it out there, but obviously it's like it's, it's like how can I? Put it? It's like he had something, but you can't really, you couldn't really tell. It's like I don't know who now can kind of almost like a uh, almost like a Zion, but Zion don't, don't have say, like don't. A, don't say no bums now. Come on now. No, no. Zion don't have a person with him, but Zion has had that same hype. It's like he's been in the league. He was in there last year. He did great. And then this year he was like a starter for the uh, All-Star game as a second-year player. It's like he's uh, had that type of hype 
just like how Kobe did. And Kobe, you know, mm, was it his first year? Not it wasn't his rookie year. He was it. He was a so it must have been his second year then, right? Second year he was a yeah. Yeah, yeah, he was a I think he was the was he the youngest all star at the time that he made it. But yeah, it was definitely not his first year. He only averaged like he, he had like seven or he was pretty low average points his first year. Okay. Well and he was he it, was he was a trash like because he got so much hype. I thought he was trash. I was like, who is this guy? Why is he getting so much love? Um, and you know what? I think this might be a perfect time to go ahead and unleash the all that story, bro. <laughs> is the audience ready? Wait, I wait, 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 wait. <clears throat> all right, we're ready now. Look, we got our popcorn. Everybody got their popcorn or whatever. I'm gonna be real. I hated Kobe. I hated this, bro. <laughs> Kobe didn't goddamn did not sign my jersey on the on the set of all that. And I held the gripe for years and I was trashing his name. Trash his name. I've been trying not to say it for a while because obviously, rest in peace to the Mamba. I didn't want to, you know, I, I didn't want to put out no negativity like that. But I think people have kind of settled in and we can get to the real stories of Kobe. And um, I don't think it was it wasn't nothing malicious. Everybody was just pulling him left and right on the day that he was at the, on the set of all that, especially the adults. You know, they were very, you know, any Laker fan was all over it. Um, and, you know, grown men around NBA players, it's like being in the candy shop. Right. So I just couldn't get the attention from Kobe that I really wanted. I was really just making it about me. But um, eventually, though, I did get the autograph. I had a shout out to Charlotte Sumter. She's a, a fame producer. Um, and I just actually linked up with her on Instagram, or at least I shot her a message. I found a old picture of us, but she was able to get it to Kobe, have him sign it and get it back to me. And I still have it right here in my closet. It says to Leon Kobe. A. Question. Yes. How you know it's the real Kobe? How you know she ain't comment you? How you know she ain't do the comment with the Michael Joy involved? How you know she ain't? What's up? Don't even kill my dreams like that, bro. Don't <laughs> just even, ask. Don't even just bring asking. that up. Uh, just, the only, I, I mean, mean, the only thing I could do is compare the autograph to other autographs, and so it definitely looks like Kobe's autograph. But one thing I will say, he wrote it in pen, not marker, not sharpie. Don't question it; it's real. But it. Hey, it I, I got an autograph from Kale. I never met Kale in person. That's all I'm saying. How do you know it's Kale? What do you? Exactly. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> well, <laughs> I would. Well, I would say that, um, you know, I met him and that he was on the show and Charlotte Sumter, you know, booked him. For okay. The show, so there was a direct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And we're okay. all in L.A. And, you know, okay. it was around. Um, gotcha. It was just he ran out of time. He just ran out of time. I'm sure he signed a lot of gra- autographs on the set that day. Um, but, yeah, I just actually put out a picture on Instagram with me, I think as a 10 or 11 year old. It was on the set of all that, and I'm wearing the jersey that he uh, eventually signed. And I've I've worn it to, um, I've, I've worn it to Laker Day parades. I've worn it to a couple events with his autograph on the back, and I've even had it hanging up in my uh, workstation in my work cubicle when we were stationed and uh, in, in physically in the workplace. So you know, it's one of my most prized possessions that I have. If not, you know, I don't know what's better than a Kobe signed autograph after meeting him. Uh, other than seeing him sign it, I think, you know, <laughs> getting it okay. from his hand would have been a little bit, you know, better. But, yeah, I held that gripe for years. I haven't really told that story in a public forum. So uh, we'll put it on Patreon. So you have to pay for it like everybody's been doing recently. <laughs> I mean, um, no, you guys have already heard it. If you heard this, your <laughs> first episode, uh, I remember you did. You didn't say that, but it was like I was like. I was like, yeah, you met Shaq, you got an autograph. And he was like, yeah, we ain't gonna talk about Kobe. And I was like, okay, <laughs> all right. So y'all go ahead and listen to that. Yeah, listen uh, to uh, yeah. Yeah, when, when I was on as a guest. Yeah, I definitely, I've definitely started the story and didn't finish it because people ask that quite often, or at least it's one of the highlights for me being on all that was, you know, Kobe showing up. And then we'll talk about some of his other TV appearances uh, in, a, in a bit. But um yeah, any other special moments? I'll just say, look, I loved one of my favorite Kobe highlights, and it's little well known, um, not very publicized. Go look up when he hit a left-handed three. 
and you will be astonished. It's not in any big game. I believe it's on Jason Terry. Uh, but yeah, he spins left. Of course it is. Yeah, Jason Terry. Is in <laughs> and shout out to Jason Terry. I've actually uh, met that guy. He's um, cousins with one of my best friends. Uh, you met Adam out in L.A. Uh, yeah. that's his that's his big cousin and you know so we politicked a little bit and uh you know adam's going to become an nba agent so he might be i thought he was yeah well he passed the test to become yeah. he just doesn't he doesn't have any clients yet but it, it'll come uh, he just passed the test bro. yeah gotta, well that's yeah, what i'm saying he, yeah, oh, i'm not i'm not rushing him i'm just saying it's uh it's to come man, it's like bro it's like <laughs> hey you just passed the test two days ago get me get me a player now hey, right come on. Uh, but I'm sure, you know, Jason and um, Eddie House is his cousin through marriage. Mm-hmm. I'm sure they will, you know, coach him up to to get someone on his on his agency roster. But, yeah, Jason Terry is on, on the on the bad end of a lot of great NBA highlights. And I will not go down that list. But shout <coughs> out. <laughs> yeah, you know, one shout is, out to Norris Cole and oh, Mario Norris Chalmers. Co- oh, gosh. Yeah, there's a there's a lot. There's a lot out there because I was thinking about something else. But um, I mean, yeah. it's just, it's probably the same one, you know. It was, it was three people that had the ball. Yeah. That's all yeah. I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this guy over here, and uh, but he got him back though. Jason Terry ended up getting Brian back. Uh, mm, not the same. What the champ? The championship. That's yeah, but of- he didn't. But the Brian didn't die. Yeah, Jason <laughs> Terry died. Like he didn't get none of those memes. Yeah, the memes of that. Look, we said we wasn't gonna do it. Hopefully, that's actually somebody we might be able to get on. So let's keep that relationship good. He told he was telling the story about him. He was telling like a story, like a they, they animated it and everything. He told the story about it was bad. Him it was bad. Going up for that. Uh even why would you why, why would you go would up you for that? that? I mean, I'm, we talk about favorites. My favorite, because a lot of my Kobe, a lot of my favorite Kobe things are off the court because I didn't start, I didn't start, I didn't start uh, that's the liking ghost of Kobe. Kobe. That's the ghost of Kobe. You about to say something? <laughs> I didn't start liking Kobe until I, I, I'm gonna say honestly until um, D'Lo and Julius Randle got there. When I started liking Kobe, not that I just like hated him. I didn't hate him. I was just like, I just didn't really like care about the Lakers. I was just you like, yeah, time they to win. get over the Orlando loss. Yeah, uh, whatever. Yeah, you needed yeah, some time. Whatever. Yeah. whatever. <laughs> nah, I was just, I just wasn't like. When I got into basketball, I wasn't like super into Kobe. I was just, I wasn't even into LeBron like that. I was just like, yeah, I know LeBron. But I was like, I wasn't into. I don't really, you know, I don't like the main we know stars. You a KD fan, we know. Well, yeah, yeah, I am, but I'm. I'm you like T Mac, right? Huh? T Mac, Tracy. Yeah, but I'm saying like they weren't that they were never like the main stars. Katie became a main star, of course. Uh, but when I started liking him, he wasn't a main star. So I guess I just don't like the main stars, and Kobe was one of them. So I don't. I guess I just don't like don't like the bandwagon type of thing. So I don't be liking to choose the most known person. But like, yeah, that's my favorite. Of course it is. Uh, but. No, nah, no. Nah, I mean, after I started liking Kobe, I started watching his documentaries. Uh, he had like two documentaries in a row that was good one year, and I was like, I think everybody need to watch this one. It was like a sit down interview, and uh, the person was like, "So, do you think you're arrogant?" He was like, "If you have someone in the street, do they like Kobe?" And they say no, because he's arrogant. And he said, "Well, why? Why is he arrogant? Because he likes to win." <laughs> because he <laughs> likes to do whatever it takes to win. You call that arrogant? I call it hard work. I was like, oh, right. uh, I guess I like Kobe now, you know? And then, of course, there's been various documentaries with Kobe and him. Um, the sit down with him and Shaq and all that. It's like, yeah, uh, a lot of people really want to get into the mind of Kobe. And uh, there is supposed to be another, technically two more documentaries coming about coming out about Kobe, technically. So uh, we we have to wait on them. Yeah, one, I mean, the mind yeah. of the Mamba is definitely one to get into, the one to pick, and I think that's you know that's his greatest attribute. That's is you know his intellect and his dedication, obviously. But knowing the game is uh you know there's there's very few that you can put up into that that higher echelon. So he was able to do what he needed to do to win games. And that was just based on, you know, his intellect and knowing what it took 
to get past the uh, the finish line. So, you know, much much kudos to Kobe. And then, not to to put a damper on it, you know, but when we talk about finish lines, the way that boy finished, as far as uh oh wait, look, I was gonna bring up his memorial, but yeah. <laughs> I was gonna bring up. Hey, you talking about finish like for real finishes? I, I was gonna bring that up, but his career. 60, yeah, but his sixty point game going out. I mean, one of the best performances in sports history. Period. There is, I, I mean, from a single player, from, um, you know, yeah, from a singular player individual standpoint, I can't think of a better performance, especially going out like. 60 points when you're so uh you know so many years old what was he in late 30s probably 37 he was, was he not 40 no nah, i don't th- was kobe 40 when he went? was he not no nah, i don't think i don't think so he, he, wasn't? he played 20 years and he was 18 when he came in so he was only 37 38 okay yeah he played 20 it was his 20th season so um yeah he was about 37 38 um but yeah, the way he went out was just like at the top of his career. You know, it was just like he was at his peak and he needed every bucket to win that game. So it was, um, you know, it was just motivational, like so many other things in Kobe's life. Um, just crazy, crazy. So this is this is this is, this uh, whole episode gonna make it seem like I just never watched Kobe play. I did, but it's like. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I was it's more... different because we, you know, from the West Coast, it was just on every day. You guys didn't get, you guys didn't get KCAL nine because it only nah. they only played certain games out here. Like, and and it's actually like that. It's even worse for people out here right now because we can't even watch every game unless you have a specific cable. So I don't get to see all. I I go out to bars right now sometimes to when the the Lakers play. Uh, so I know it, you guys definitely didn't didn't have it like the way we did. It was an every other day ritual for you know. For people in LA area, you yeah, yeah, sit down um, and watch the game. <laughs> I, uh, I, I mean, I really do like his interviews because Kobe was a, as far as the interviews, like a joyous person. Like, I watch his um, Jimmy Kimmel interviews. He was on Jimmy Kimmel for like twenty times. Seemed yeah. like, but yeah, all of those are interesting. Um, funny. Have you seen the interview with him and Brandy when it was on the set of Moesha? Yeah, it's uh his first entertainment. I see, yeah, yeah, I see and they was heavy flirting. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> talking well, about their dates, but not nah, it just from the very beginning, his personality always shined. Um, even though you know he kind of kept that separate because he was so focused on basketball. Whenever he was out there, you knew there was something special about him, dude. There was something special about him. He's dope. Yeah, I, I, is it weird to say I like retired Kobe interviews? It's weird to say. Nah, nah. I think Kobe, you know, he transformed once he retired. He, like once on the court, you know, he was very polarizing. But once he got off the court, I think he was just more loved and loved. Like he was beloved off the court um, in in retirement. Um, and not just because of what he did with his with his daughter and everything, but just him being himself and how he transformed his career. Like he just became such a lovable guy and he was so intelligent that, you know, a lot of people prefer a retired Kobe. Um, I mean, I kind of alluded to yeah. it earlier, but I do want to talk about the the Kobe celebration of life, uh, you know, him going out here and the, the way he was celebrated. So oh, before we get to that, mm-hmm. I'm going to just uh, – because I don't want to – I don't want to talk about I hate before. Uh, I love <laughs> – You want to get one more, one yeah, more yeah, dig nah. on Kobe out? No, it's not, a, it's not a dig. It's my favorite – it's my favorite Kobe – probably my favorite Kobe thing. I'll be honest with you. Probably my favorite Kobe thing he's ever done. Not ever done, but, you know, like my favorite Kobe commercial. My favorite thing related to Kobe Bryant is the I hate commercial because it's so well done. Uh, it took all the haters that he ever had in his career almost and like made him sing the song I hate on his retirement year, which I, I thought was brilliant, you know, because you got a lot of people that say I hate Kobe Bryant over the years, of course. Um, but the way that they did it in that commercial was probably my as because it's so touching, especially now. But back then I was like, oh, that's so well done. I mean, he's, he just, so, he's so smart to embrace it and then also use it as motivation, you know. That um, I mean, that just speaks to Kobe and his awareness for sure. 
Yeah, I might even put that commercial in here. Uh, I, when I did it, when I did the Kobe Bryant uh, episode, I put it in here. So I'm gonna put it in there again because you can never get too much of that commercial. All right, well, we'll, we'll be back after this. After this. I've been hating you. Too long to stop now. You're retiring, and you want to be free. My hate was growing stronger as you became a habit to me. Yeah, so you know, I was blessed, super blessed to actually uh be able to to go to the memorial. And um actually that's where I got this shirt, not in the memorial, but out on the streets of, of LA surrounding Staples Center. Um, but yeah, I, I just I'm just want to know, did he have the 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 best memorial, the biggest, the most star-studded memorial of all time? I mean, there's been some greats that have taken place, obviously, in Staples Center. Right before him, it was Nipsey. And then, you know, we had Michael Jackson started the trend of, of having these arena sized um, memorials or funerals. Let's stay away from the word funeral. We'll just call it celebrations of life. But Kobe, I mean, we could we could start at the bottom of the list. Um you know, with, with I'm gonna Christine, just say Christina Aguilera, like you know, I, a little some so I'm like she uh, nothing bottom, compared bottom of the list. Sorry, I mean, <laughs> I mean, you could probably put in some of his coaches and other guys before. I mean, below her, but you know, when when Christina Aguilera is like the lowest, um, you know, the lowest performance <laughs> when you got Alicia Keys, you got Beyonce, all you know, showing up to to pay their respects, and then you got. Uh, speakers like Shaquille O'Neal and Michael Jordan who doesn't come out for nobody it's um you know it was just amazing the people that he was able to bring out that show so much love to Kobe and then you know Denzel was there in the front I can't even remember all the all the stars well I mean Kobe does not to sound like a hater but Kobe kind of has a cheat because he is an NBA star he's influenced probably every single NBA player that's in the NBA right now uh, so if you take all the NBA players that's all in the NBA right now, plus all the people, all the legends, that's kind of, that's, that's kind of like you got like the whole eighty, like the whole like ninety six through like now NBA. That's legend. Yeah, I mean, but <laughs> but legends. I mean, I ain't gonna put nobody out there, but say, should I just say a name? Like, <laughs> if Chauncey Billis pass away, like he know everybody, they ain't gonna all come out. You're not gonna see Shaq come out. Like you know what I'm saying? It, well, it he didn't play to, with Shaq either. But so, it yeah. speaks. But if uh, if a team, another teammate of Shaq passed away, you might not. You're not going to see Shaq come out. It's be, it speaks to the legend of Kobe Bryant. It speaks to his greatness uh, that he did affect so many people. Um, and so I mean, it's all on his back. It, yeah, it's a cheat, but he earned that cheat. Yes. Not everybody. Not everybody gonna get it just because they was there. I mean, this no, is I'm just name. saying this is a I'm name we can we can throw out there, Kwame Brown. <laughs> if Kwame Brown passed away right now, they're gonna give a goddamn look. It's gonna be Karan Butler there. <laughs> I want to encourage everyone to go back on my Instagram. Look at me plug myself, go on my IGTV. I got about a five, six minute video of me, you know, experiencing the memorial. You'll see all the performances and uh, everything from my perspective. And uh, yeah, and that last picture that I just put out with Kobe is actually from that day. I just ca- cropped it up. Uh, but yeah, you guys um, go check that out. Off the court, Kobe was a star as well. It wasn't just on the court that we saw Kobe thriving. Um, you know, we also saw him do some things in the acting realm. Uh, man, what are some of your favorite, like, Kobe moments on what, television uh, or are we going to movies? I'm going to go to TV because... Uh, he has some dope 90s TV appearances. I'm, I, all right, look, I, 
I'm all the underdog, y'all know. So I'm not gonna be like, oh, he was on all that. Nah, that's not my favorite. You already know, you already know what I'm about to say. It's a one-on-one. It's not Moesha, it's one on one. I mean, not one on one. I'm gonna talk about in uh, the house. you know, in the house, yeah, yeah. Okay, look, it's in the like, house. What? I was like, wait, I'm nah, 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 one. not 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 one on one. He was not on one on one, right? Uh he was not, but you know, it was it was a sports related show, so he right, could have right, right. been like, you know. Like Lisa Leslie was on there, but she wasn't Lisa Leslie. She was like a whatever. But um, yeah, nah. Go go uh, on in the house was like a good. Well, Kobe's part was a good episode. He was uh trying to talk. Wait, <laughs> well, you didn't like the rest? Like, come on now. <laughs> he was trying to talk to Mike Campbell. He was trying to talk to Mike Campbell, but uh, I was gonna uh, say something real bad. I I I just got a real bad thought. I I'm glad. Derek I didn't say Fisher. It. <laughs> Shout out Derek to Mike Fisher. Campbell. <laughs> <laughs> Derek Fisher was was trying to talk to Tonya, and uh, if y'all watch, y'all know the episode <laughs> I'm talking about. So y'all don't know, go watch it. Just know. Hey, and uh, and it was hilarious. Um, I mean, obviously we know Kim Wayans is funny, but in this particular episode, you know she has some enhancements trying to attract Derek. And they ended up literally on her head upside. <laughs> uh, and it was, uh, yeah, it's just a, a great episode. Kobe was kind of quiet in that one, though. Other than, like, getting at Maya, like, he was doing his thing. He was it was a, um, uh, I believe Derek it was a really, two- Derek really stood out. I believe it was a two-parter. Mm-hmm. I believe. I know, I think I it was know like- Derek was definitely on there twice. I didn't see if Kobe was on there twice. He was. He was, he was on there twice. Because it was like a, um. It was like the season premiere, so it might have been the second and third episodes, or maybe the the first, second, and third episode, but they were only on the second and third, something like that, because it was like they're building a new uh, a new office or whatever. But Kobe and that was 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 good in my like, even though he wasn't in there like that much, it's like just him and the interaction. Of course, him on the, on all that and all that, but uh, I, I really do like him on in the house because it's just like he's there. And he's not like Kobe, but he's just like he's he's Kobe, but he's just like, what's up? I'm Kobe. He's not like, you know, superstar. Everybody coming up to him, Kobe. Even though, you know, right, right. This my, is still my Kobe. Camera was, yeah. This is still Kobe with the low cut. Uh, on by the time he got on all that, he had the hair. Yeah, he had the he had the full fro that um mm-hmm. was giving him. He had the crown. Let's just call it the yeah. He had the Kobe crown. Uh, by the time he got on uh, all that but some uh one of my favorite appearances that i thought was actually pretty funny was him on sister sister i don't know if you've seen that recently mm-hmm. um, yeah the home girl at um at school was competing with uh t and tamara <laughs> the rich girl and That's so funny. yeah it was <laughs> just the premise of him being on there because they paid to get his autograph uh 20 bucks and it was like, this is the best 20 bucks we ever spent. And like they all thinking they was gonna run uh one up. I believe her name might have been Melissa. Uh they thought they was gonna one up the rich girl. And then she showed up with Kobe Bryant <laughs> in high school. That's <laughs> that, you know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie, that's such a good movie trope. It was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna one up you. I got a, uh I got you know Kobe sweat. All right, well, I got right, Kobe right. Bryant. I was like, that sounds just <laughs> It's a funny TV trope. I just like it. Right. And it was, um, you know, and, and to, you know, to make it make sense, she was obviously rich and it was her dad's uh, business. He was going to be in a commercial. And so, like, he said something stupid that was from the commercial. Like, that's all he could do is, like, acting robotic, that he was just basically a slave to the girl. Like, why are you running around behind this girl in high school? Just, <laughs> but, um, yeah, it was um, it was classic. It was hilarious. If you guys haven't seen him on Sister Sister, uh, definitely go check that out. And then um, what? A, well, obviously, I think one of his most famous appearances, uh, should we should just get to it, was him on Moesha. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. and, and what made it so famous is it wasn't his performance or anything, although that was like one of his introductions to the L.A. scene in general. Um, it was the history between him and Brandy, you know, that really, you know, put it on a spotlight because, you know, just being an LA kid at that time, not even being an actor, it was just so well known that they 
you know, that they was kicking it. They was 17 and 18 years old when he was on, um, when he was on the set. I think they had already gone to prom, uh, which put like the fire, uh, you know, under the media to, to make sure that they, they got some, some clips of, of this and they have a famous interview on entertainment tonight where they're just, um, you know, it's just so obvious that they're into each other at the time. Uh, yeah. Um, was that like the only, was that the only, why am I feel like I'm missing a, a show? Cause we ain't talked about all that yet. I mean, that's typical. I mean, yeah, he was on all that. He was in the whatever sketch. Look where I got this. Christy and Amanda. Pull it out. Look, look, I said it was in pen. Can you see? <laughs> oh yeah. You see to Leon, Kobe eight gang, gang. Uh, you know, I had to bring that out real quick since um I was able to acquire that based on his appearance uh up on all that in the what whatever skit. We don't need to really talk about what happened there because Christy and Amanda was just acting crazy. They caught a Kobe. We caught a Kobe. It's weird though that they did have like how old were they at the time? Like in their teens still, like in they like I don't want to say mid teens, but you know, they and went they like, wasn't you know, they went like it wasn't adults, and they was finding over adult men, and he was yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like we we got Kobe, and we got it. We tried to what you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Like you know, what it, what is implied here? I mean, for randomly, why is one of the most famous pictures of Kobe is a picture with him and Keenan and Kill? Why is that like the most famous picture? One of it the most is. famous pictures. It is, and they're like both teasing like this. Look, yes, it's so because like. That makes his round about every three months. That picture, it, it, and it's so weird. It's like it. Uh, whose birthday was it? Keenan's birthday. Keenan's birthday. They post a picture of him, Kale, and, and Kobe. Like happy birthday, Keenan. I'm like, why is people, everybody posting this picture? You know. In fact, that uh, should be the cover to this uh, episode, <laughs> or at least one that we throw out okay. on, on Instagram for sure. Okay. Because- you know, it, it just embodies nostalgia. That's what it is. When people think of nostalgia, young Kobe, you could, and, you know, he literally transcends the basketball court, like we've been talking about. Like, he he has a cheat code. And, you know, Keenan and Kel have definitely have a special place in 90s nostalgia. So mm-hmm. seeing the three of them together, three young Black brothers, like, in their prime, I think that just, you know, it brings people back to a special place. Special they should have brought them. They should have brought them back when uh, they did um, Goodberg. They they were te- technically in the uh, in the L.A. arena. Shaq was there. Like you know, Kobe could have turned around and ate a sandwich too. But you know, <laughs> people, people gotta pay. So man, look, I was gonna act like Kobe. I sometimes forget that he has passed away. I was gonna say they could still bring him back, but you know, that's just unfortunate. It's just unfortunate, man, because it feels like he's still here. He's had so much more work that he could have done. Uh, you know, so many more acting for sure. With acting, Kobe could have tore it up, uh, because he has a great knack of like being himself. But like when he's just playing a basketball player, it's like I don't know. It's just something dope about it. On and you know, it's it's definitely uh something that played in in um a few of his appearances. A lot of times he just played as Kobe Bryant, mm-hmm. uh, like in the Brandy uh performance. Though he was just a basketball player, but um. You know, I don't know. It's, he has a he he definitely transcends the court as far as his personality and his uh, skill acting skills. Eh, he's all right. I mean, he's playing Kobe Bryant, like yeah. Uh, he's better I, than Ray Allen, though. Ray Allen definitely better than Ray Ray. I would say. Uh, um, you know, so first I want to apologize to to the boy Kobe, uh, but then second, you know, I just want to if not that my perspective is uh needed but just send you know continue to send him off with all the praise that he deserves and continue to you know up his legacy and and um you know just sing his praises because he's he should be loved for so many reasons outside of the his skill with that with that basketball and on the court but his the mamba mentality is something that lives in all of us uh if you tap into it uh, I know it was a big motivation for me getting up on that uh, 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 up on that stage for for stand up. You know, I was doing I did it right shortly after he passed, and um, he he uh, 
it, it was definitely a big motivation for me to just step out on faith and get out there uh, because I know, you know, Kobe would never let something like fear hold him back. So um, shout out to Kobe Bryant, uh, the bean um, and, you know, May's legacy will live forever. Legends, legends live forever. Legends never die. So uh, yeah, Kobe Bean Bryant celebration, appreciation, all that, man. And I, his guys behind me every day, man, every day. So to all the people that's not sports fans that listen to it, just recognize it's sports in the podcast every day, man, whether I, we talk about it or not. Uh, I keep it back there for motivation um, because, yeah, he's just one of the best of all time in many facets. Well, I can't say nothing else. I, I can't say Don't nothing Don't try else, to top it because I'm nice. Yeah. I'm nice with this. I'm getting nice at podcasts. So, anyway. Where y'all at, man? Stop playing. I will just t- tell everybody. You might as well tell everybody where to find you. You can Finish find me on uh, LeeBoyTV.com, uh, at LeeBoyTV on all socials. Uh, show me some love on my Kobe post that I, uh, I put up a couple of days ago, just following his Hall of Fame induction. Uh, and also, you know, I got the My Brother and Me post going crazy right now. Let's try to get some of those uh, brothers on the on the cast, especially Goo Punch. And uh, Alfie, we want to see those two brothers together and do a reunion right here on the pod. Um, but yeah, go check me out and, and go show, me some, show us some love on Apple, Spotify, and on iHeartRadio. Uh, we, we're looking to, you know, maybe maybe we could team up with one of these podcast networks one of these days. You know, I wouldn't I wouldn't be mad. I wouldn't be mad at it. Yeah. Uh... I'm not gonna talk to Kobe. I ain't gonna. Talk. I'm gonna just stick, stick, stay in my lane. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at KVNG Prime Time. Follow the podcast at Prime Nostalgia Pod. Uh, for y'all listening, he just put up the Kobe jersey again. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, follow the pod. Follow us on Twitter, and uh, yeah, uh, just let us know what kind of topics y'all want us to do. We gonna we still got some stuff coming. Remember, this is the 90th episode. Mm. Do your math. Just do your math. That's all we're saying. Do do your math. Uh, better math than I did, of course. Uh, and uh, without further ado, I'm going to just say prom time is all the time, and we out. Hey. Mamba out. Mm, Mamba out. Look, you did that. <laughs>